August 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapter 29 from the Old Testament. Then Job continued his speech, Oh, that I could be as I was in the months now gone, in the days when God watched over me, when he caused his lamp to shine upon my head and by his light I walk through darkness, just as I was in my most productive time. When God's intimate friendship was experienced in my tent, when the Almighty was still with me, and my children were around me, when my steps were bathed with butter and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil, when I went out to the city gate and secured my seat in the public square, the young men would see me and step aside, and the old men would get up and remain standing. The chief men refrained from talking and covered their mouths with their hands, the voices of the nobles fell silent, and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. As soon as the ear heard these things, it blessed me, and when the eye saw them, it bore witness to me. For I rescued the poor who cried out for help, and the orphan who had no one to assist him. The blessing of the dying man descended on me, and I made the widow's heart rejoice. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My just dealing was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes for the blind and feet for the lame. I was a father to the needy, and I investigated the case of the person I did not know. I broke the fangs of the wicked and made him drop his prey from his teeth. Then I thought, I will die in my own home, my days as numerous as the grains of sand. My roots reach the water and the dew lies on my branches all night long. My glory will always be fresh in me and my bow ever new in my hand. People listened to me and waited silently. They kept silent for my advice. After I had spoken, they did not respond. My words fell on them drop by drop. They waited for me as people wait for the rain, and they opened their mouths as for the spring rains. If I smiled at them, they hardly believed it, and they did not cause the light of my face to darken. I chose the way for them and sat as their chief. I lived like a king among his troops. I was like one who comforts the mourners. God, I thank you for the times that I have felt like Job. You know, usually in the past I have said, oh, my life is like Job's, I can't believe it. But now reading and recording the book of Job and really thinking about it and really studying it, the more and more I go back to your commandment for us to rejoice in all things, even when we're going through the storm, even when we're going through the hard times. And I think about this listening to Job going, oh, my life was so great when, when God shone his light on me. But now that he's taken it away, my life has gone into despair. Uh, woe is me. And I realize more and more that my life is pulling apart from the world. Uh, initially, this was a painful process. <laughs> you know that. It was a lot of fights over a lot of things that I wanted to hold on to this world. But now it has become very slight, the things that I hold on to this world. Some of them are still there, and I, I know that you and I work on those almost every day. But the smallness of the things of this world, the inconsequential things of this world that we make into such big deals. I am learning more and more as I work on the, the big, huge cornerstones of my faith with you. And as I work on the deepness of that relationship with you, that it doesn't matter whether I'm going through good times like Job's talking about in here, whether I'm going through the bad times, quote, bad times, because you never leave me. You never forsake me. And you always, this doesn't ever change. You always want what is best for me. So if something that I'm going through, let's say for right now, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, life was great, or so I thought it was great. I was actually setting myself up for some bad situations. Um, everything seemed to be going well I was rejoicing in you worshiping you throughout the day and then boom 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 right in a row a whole bunch of things happened that just gosh 
I wasn't even able to catch my breath because of all the things that were happening. And what's incredible is, you know, I just called uh, my best friend this afternoon and I just said, oh, well, <laughs> here's one more thing we're going to add on to it. And there was just a, I don't want to say a whatever tone in my, my voice. It was just a, I know God and I will get through this. I know God will figure this out. And I know that I will be obedient to that process and we will figure it out. There's no sense in wasting emotions and energy and frustrations and and time trying to deal with something that one can't be dealt with right now um, and two should only be taken to you in prayer um, because it's you who's going to need to figure pieces of it out whether it's people or paperwork or things having to do with personal life or things having to do with business I I'm going to need your guidance on what your will is in all those things because right now I'm overwhelmed <laughs> with all of the things that have kind of gone wrong lately. And again, I use the wrong terminology. It's not that they've gone wrong. They've gone the way that they are supposed to for me to have the best path with you. They went the way they were supposed to so that I could learn what I need to, so I could experience things that I need to. Um, I read something the other day that said, there's no testimony without the word test. And it's very true. So much of my very powerful pieces of my testimony came from all of the tests that I went through. Uh, as you were giving me a new heart, uh, growing up, things that have happened now. And here's what's amazing about testimonies. Not only obviously glorifying you and reflecting how crazy awesome you are, God, but they allow us to have understandings with somebody else. So if I'm talking to somebody who's been, who's dealing with drug addiction or alcoholism, I'm going to have a harder time opening up to them and sharing things with them because our stories, our testimonies aren't matching. Um, but somebody else out there has gone through that valley, has gone through that painful time, has gone through that darkness in their life. And when that that person talks about their struggles and their demons and their choices of sin, that other person is like, oh gosh, I totally understand. And here's some things that might help you. Here's what God showed me. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly blessed and honored that my choices of sexual sin, um, because of things that happened when I was younger, not blaming anybody else. I'm an adult. I take responsibility for my own actions, but that's what happened and that led me into into that particular type of choice that testimony has been the way that I've been able to sit down and talk to a lot of the youth girls I work with who are struggling with that same thing if I was a virgin until I got married and then I was married to the same person for my whole life these girls would say you don't understand you don't understand my struggle you don't understand my pain you don't understand this temptation and I would have to agree with them. But my testimony is like theirs. I've gone through that pain. I've gone through that hurt. I've gone through that um, devastation. I've also gone through that forgiveness part with you, God. And that becomes one of the biggest parts of my testimony is all the parts that you play in it and how you were by my side, how you walked with me how you kept me out of some of the dangerous situations that I could have got myself into, how you loved me, how you forgave me, and how you taught me through those situations. So it's absolutely incredible reading Job right now and understanding that my hard times, like Job's hard times, we know that they don't come from us being good or they don't come up from us necessarily being bad. They come from a just God who knows what's best for us. But it's really reminded me that my version of what I think I'm going through is definitely almost always not your version of what I'm going through. That your version of what I'm going through is this big totality picture of the entire world and how my little tiny timeline fits into that. And amazingly, my little tiny timeline is so important to you, which is amazing to realize that. And that little tiny timeline, you want what is best for me because you love me beyond anything that I've ever been loved before. Somebody told me that you love me more in this exact moment 
than anybody will my entire life. And I can see that that would be true. I have a hard time accepting it because my heart doesn't have the capacity for love that is that big. Um, but I definitely see it in my life and how things play out with you. God, help me to continue to work on trusting you and having faith in you and believing in you, whether I'm going through the valleys or whether I'm at the very top of the mountain and super excited about what's going on, that all, at all times, that my faith, that my basis for my faith would be my contentment in you, that all of my rejoicing from all situations would come from that same place. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. 